Tesla's supercharging network is one of their best advantages they have on competitors. I think that's one of the main deciding factors a lot of people are going to think about when deciding to make that switch to an EV because it's just so simple. It's so easy to understand. Yes, the car brand that I'm buying from also has an expansive charger network that I can drive to, grab one of those cables, plug them into my car, and it starts charging. It's that simple. You don't have to have an account. You don't have to pull out a credit card. But the fact is, it's a fundamental downside to electric vehicles that recharging them in comparison to refueling a car with gas is a whole lot slower. And Tesla's done a lot to combat this with version 3 supercharging, which has come a long way from the early days of Tesla superchargers that were around, you know, typically the 100 kilowatt charge speed, which was pretty good. You know, it was faster than most people were used to, but still, you could be at a supercharger for easily 30 minutes to an hour just getting your range back. Whereas version 3 supercharging definitely has minimized that to become a more average of around 30 minutes to charge up your battery enough to get to the point where you can reach to the next station. Of course, version 3 is now supported on all Tesla vehicles and can charge up to 250 kilowatts. But of course, that's not exactly sustained, so it's not constantly charging at that rate. But that does mean that when your battery is low, you can get over a thousand miles an hour added back to your battery as you're charging, which is pretty cool. But however, Elon did give us a little hint at the Cybertruck event when he said it could charge at over 250 kilowatts, which at first might sound really insane, but when you think about it, the Cybertruck likely has very, very large battery packs because for one, it's a much heavier vehicle, it's a much larger vehicle, and some people have speculated that that tri-motor 500 mile Cybertruck could probably be packing a battery pack well over 180 kilowatt hours. So we're talking almost two Model S battery packs stacked together. In fact, some people are even thinking it could be a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack inside there. We don't know. It depends a lot on the energy efficiency and the type of batteries they're using once the Cybertruck is available, but Elon said we'd get the official charge speed at a later date, but I think it's reasonable to assume given there's other EV charge points out there that are claiming they're going to be able to eventually support 350 kilowatts, which is insanely fast, and there's even some vehicles out there today that are claiming that they're going to support fast charging at up to 350 kilowatts. There's just not much of a network that supports it, or they've left the software feature turned off in the vehicle themselves, and I think as Tesla wants to be at the bleeding edge of electric vehicles, and while they love talking about how they're open source and they want other people to use their batteries and powertrains and that kind of thing, at the same time, Tesla can be highly competitive though. Sometimes a product will come out or something will get unveiled and Tesla will do their best to beat those specifications because at the end of the day, I think Tesla really is competitive and knowing that there's gonna be these other charge points and other vehicles that are capable of charging faster than Tesla's, I think they don't like that and I think they have something big planned for version four. I think worst case scenario, we should expect version four supercharging to be around 350 kilowatts, which could mean into the future as Tesla designs their batteries to take this much energy at once, the average supercharging session could go down from, you know, 30 minutes to around 20 minutes. Now you're getting really, really close to how much time people typically spend at a gas station, which I know majority of the time people can just drive in, fill up and be out within 10 minutes. But as electric cars and charge rates are improving and getting much, much better, this might slowly start to become less and less of an electric car issue and more of just a physics battle because I really don't think it's that complicated to send 350 kilowatts through a cable. The complicated part is how you preserve the battery health, which of course on Battery Investor Day, which is just around the corner, we should be hearing about their next generation cells they're using and the roadmap to producing, you know, millions and millions of electric vehicles every single year. So I'm hoping that they at least talk a little bit about version 4 supercharging at this Investor Day because I think people hearing that in the future it won't take, you know, 30 minutes to 40 minutes to charge up your electric car on a road trip, but now in the future, if they start using updated battery packs and probably have to update some of the internal wiring on Tesla vehicles, maybe they could start supporting 350 kilowatts or better because Tesla likes to go above and beyond. They like to surpass their competitors, not just match them, so who knows? Maybe even getting closer to 400 kilowatt charge rate, in which case you could totally imagine a ton of people just stopping at a supercharger, plugging in for about 15 20 minutes and then being good for the rest of the drive and that of course will give you plenty of time to reach the next supercharger it's safe to say that version 4 is not probably coming out anytime soon obviously elon said they wanted to give us a hard number before the cybertruck officially launched so maybe they don't want to really talk about it until next year when cybertruck deliveries are getting closer and closer but tesla is also really really pushing hard with the version 3 supercharger rollout right now they are literally working around the clock to make sure they get supercharger 
superchargers up in as many places as possible. They're ramping the production of superchargers for China. They're rolling out new ones in the United States all the time, most of which are supporting 250 kilowatt charge rates, which means, of course, obviously less time at each station. People can charge up really quickly, make it to the next charger, and thankfully, all Teslas being sold today can finally support version 3, so lots of people are able to utilize those faster charge rates, but the only reason I have a theory that they might want to talk about this on Battery Investor Day is because Model S Plaid is coming, as well as the Tesla Roadster, which frankly, these vehicles are going to be rocking very, very large battery packs, and that means that even if you are charging at a V3 250 kilowatt rate, it's still going to take a lot longer than most people with a Model 3 and Model Y because their batteries are a lot smaller and their range isn't going to be as crazy as the Model S or the Roadster is going to be, which means that even supporting V4 could still result in some of these higher priced, bigger range vehicles still requiring to stay at the supercharger for around 30 to 40 minutes. There's actually some hypotheticals you can do with a better route planner and you can start to realize that even with a 500 mile Cybertruck, you actually don't get to great distances as fast compared to lower range vehicles because they don't have to charge as long. That's why I think the next generation of supercharging is so crucial because you can plug in routes and realize, hey, the 500 mile Cybertruck, it doesn't have to stop as often on a long road trip, but when it does stop, it's gonna be stuck at that supercharger for well over an hour just to get way up to that 500 mile mark because this is a giant battery pack it's rocking inside of it. Only way we can really fix that is if Tesla starts working on ways to output even more power and roll out those charger stations more so, or at least update some older charge stations. Maybe they don't need to update the V3 stalls, but maybe update version two or version one because there still are quite a few of them out there, but I'm sure Tesla has a grand master plan. Obviously the Tesla Semi is using its own thing, so that's version eight mega charging or whatever. That's gonna be outputting way more than 350 kilowatts, but having some type of middle ground for the Cybertruck I think makes a whole lot of sense and will make people going on long road trips a lot more comfortable knowing that they don't have to stop and wait as long. And also I'm hoping that with the rollout of V4 superchargers, which will be ideal for the Cybertruck, they can build some of them to be passed through so that people towing and having trailers can park and charge and then just drive out instead of having to unhook the trailer every single time. What do you guys think of version four supercharging? Feel free to hit me up over on Twitter, join my Discord, let me know what your guys' theories of how fast it's going to be over there. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.